Does treatment differ for scoliosis patients over the age of 70? The most common type of scoliosis in adults is idiopathic scoliosis. Cases of idiopathic scoliosis in adults are typically cases of adolescent scoliosis that were never diagnosed and they were untreated through their entire adolescent and young adult life and they're typically dealing with the effects in later stage years or in older life. It's not uncommon for adolescents for not to know that they actually have scoliosis because most adolescents do not feel any type of pain as a result of their scoliosis, no matter what size the curve becomes. We know in the adult patient, the scoliosis becomes more and more painful because as, when skeletal maturity is reached, the scoliosis becomes compressive over time as a result of gravity compressing the scoliosis, increasing the size. And the amount of pain you feel in the adult form is relative to how much your curve worsens in the adult form, not the total size. So meaning that you can have an 80 degree curve as a child and not feel any pain, hold it 80 degrees your whole life, theoretically you'll feel no discomfort and pain as a result of that. However, as an adolescent, you can progress to 10 or 15 degrees, not uh, feel any kind of pain, your curve progress in the adult form from 15 degrees to 25 degrees, and those 10 degrees can lead to a significant amount of pain. So the amount of pain you feel in the adult form is relative to how much you worsen in the adult form, not your total size of curvature. However, degenerative scoliosis is the most next most common type, and this occurs in the adult form. It starts in the adult form, and this definitely is related to size of curve. So as the curve gets bigger at the degenerative stage, it can cause more pain and discomfort. Now, degenerative scoliosis, I like to break it down into two categories. The first type is what I just mentioned. These are adult patients that develop scoliosis in the adult form because of something happened in their adult life that led to this, this degenerative condition. But unfortunately, idiopathic scoliosis untreated in the adolescent form will also degenerate as well. And by the time you become 60, 70 years of age, you have a significant amount of degeneration in this idiopathic scoliosis cases. So either whether you have degenerative scoliosis or idiopathic scoliosis that's become degenerative, most cases we're dealing with the same types of problems, that this degeneration is caused by this age-related spinal degeneration that has accumulated over a long period of time. And this degeneration is mostly diagnosed in females because we know scoliosis affects females more than it does males. This could also be related to some bone changes or bone density problems or some hormone related issues in menopause. But we also see this in men with scoliosis as well. So we're not really sure the relationship there. Spinal degeneration, that occurs in idiopathic scoliosis or degenerative scoliosis can make the spine increasingly unbalanced, unstable, and it can make it very rigid and stiff, which can lead to a loss of problems, especially as patients get older. The spine is vulnerable to degeneration, just like the rest of the body, and the less symmetrical the spine is, the less balanced it is, just like an unaligned car, the more the spine is gonna deteriorate rapidly in the areas of misalignment relative to the ones that are not. So you can imagine a car that's not aligned, with the tire that has more weight, more pressure on it, is gonna deteriorate faster than the other three tires as a result of asymmetrical weight bearing. This is true with patients that develop scoliosis. Now, the most common type, like I mentioned, is the idiopathic scoliosis case that developed in the adolescent. You move into the adult form, you don't know you have it, and now you're living your whole life with an asymmetrical spine, and these discs start to deteriorate between these vertebrae, the bones start to deteriorate in the curvature, and you lead to this degenerative scoliosis, but we see a very symmetrical amount of degeneration throughout the entire curvature. In a true degenerative scoliosis, meaning onset occurs in the adult form, what you're going to see is that the apex of the curvature has a significant more degeneration than the rest of the curvature because that area had a small shift that occurred maybe in young adult life. It, caught, it never got fixed and it led to spinal degeneration that led to now you have this scoliosis in the adult form. These discs are very important. They, were, they give the spine structure, they give the spine flexibility, they provide cushion, they act as shock absorbers. And we know that in adults over 70, the spine can be unstable due to the amount of degeneration, meaning it's just not being able to elongate properly. And this degenerative scoliosis increases that spinal stability even further. And the abnormal weight bearing and stiffness can make it very difficult for adult patients to actually move and walk properly.
Now, when we look at this degenerative condition, what tends to happen is that it happens over time. And the most common story I hear from patients that are 70 years of age that are dealing with scoliosis, there's these two cases. One is that they know they had it and they go into the doctors and they say that you have scoliosis, but they say, don't worry about it. It's not going to worsen when it comes back, when it gets, when it gets really, really bad come back and we'll figure something out. And normally these patients are waiting ye decade after decade for their curve to worsen, to worsen, to worsen, to worsen. And then it gets so bad by the time they're 65 or 70, now they say like, like we have this debilitating pain, we have all these problems. They go back to their doctor and say, oh yeah, you have this severe scoliosis, but we can't do anything. Because if we do anything now, like any kind of surgery, you're not gonna survive it. So now you just have to live with the problem and patients become very, very frustrated. And this is not uncommon. This is probably the most common scenario that I tend to see. The second type is patients that they, they find they have scoliosis in later adult life, maybe 50 or 60 years of age. They go in for some problems and normally they're getting treated by their symptoms of their scoliosis, meaning they'll start doing disc surgeries or start doing injections in the nerve system. They'll start doing all these things to deal with the pain symptoms that they're experiencing, but the curve isn't treated and the curve is increasing in size, you know, you know, year by year by year by year. And then they get into this older stage life with this relatively severe scoliosis. And now the doctor says, oh yeah, you have this severe scoliosis. That's why I have all these problems. But again, there's nothing we can do because you're probably not gonna survive the surgery anyway. So the well, point here I'm trying to say is is that if you know that you have scoliosis and you're getting symptoms for it, the sooner you treat the scoliosis, the better. It's never too late to stop treating scoliosis to try to reduce the curve, but by far, the sooner you start treating it, the better. Degenerative scoliosis treatment can involve many different things. Gentle chiropractic care, a modified physical therapy approach for patients of over the age of 70, trying to improve mobility, improve strength, and improve endurance of the spine. Because we know we can create more endurance, more flexibility, we know adult patients can move better, especially patients over the age of 70. Making these muscles stronger and more supportive and more stable is our number one goal. And bracing can also be used short term for pain relief for adult patients to help improve the, the stability of the spine and help reduce pain and to help elongate them better. So there are differences between children, adults, and older adults with scoliosis, um, and especially the treatment that we offer. But scoliosis is progressive, and it's progressive in every age group. And we know progression is triggered by growth in adolescence, and it can be very, very rapid in growth in, in this adolescent growth spurts. But in adults, the progression is very slow in midlife, I'll say from 20 to about 50. And these progressions are very, very slow and stable and very linear. When you start to break 50, 55, there tends to be an increased rate of progression. And this rate of progression can start increasing and it can start becoming very quick again post 65, 70 years of age, where we can start seeing five, 10, 15 degrees a year. So we know curve reductions are, are goals in every group because we know the smaller the curve is, the less it progresses. And in every stage, adolescent, adult, late stage adult life, the bigger the curve becomes, the more likely it is to become bigger and the faster it becomes bigger. So therefore, we wanna reduce the size of the curvature to reduce the amount the curve is progressing. So reducing the curve is the goal in every group, even adults. Now, in adult patients, we may not be able to get the same amount of reductions that we get in adolescent patients, but, but, but reduction is still a goal because if we can reduce the curve, we can improve pain. And that's the number one focus that adult patients are seeking treatment is to try to improve their pain, where in adolescent patients, we're just really trying to reduce the curve so as much as possible because they're not normally experiencing pain or discomfort. So when it comes to treatment differences in degenerative scoliosis, we're really focusing on preserving function, improving mobility, preventing further degeneration, and increasing the spinal support and stability and mobility. We want patients to be able to get up stand, walk, and stay mobile. Because we know once patients over the age of 70 really stop moving and walking because of stiffness and pain in their spine, it can really start affecting other things, even life expectancy. So therefore, spinal stability and support and mobility is really what we're shooting for. Scoliosis in older patients can be challenging and it can involve varying degrees of severity and degeneration. But however, we have helped patients over the age of 70 improve their scoliosis. In fact, the oldest patient I've ever treated has been a 97 year old patient with about 120 degree scoliosis. So we can treat curves that have are relatively severe and relatively old patients. But the goal here is to 
always treat the curb as soon as you find it conservatively, because the sooner you treat it, the more likely you're not gonna have the problems as you continue to age and the curve continues to worsen. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you have any questions about this topic or other scoliosis questions, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish new videos just like this.